Here we're looking at the service types menu in Element Scheduler. Service types are a way to classify what kind of work we're doing when we perform a scheduled visit. So service types really only apply to recurring work, uh, maintenance work or fertilization work, lawn care, uh, snow and ice, that sort of thing. So we don't use service types for construction style work, but for maintenance style work, we know we need to go to this property X amount of times over the year. But what is it that we're doing when we're there? Is it a cut? Is it a fertilization? Fertilization one, two, three, four. The reason we want to track service types is though that on the timesheet, the crew can mark off that, yes, we completed this and this, and then you can run reports knowing that, okay, this got done, this still hasn't been done, this has gone overdue, without just knowing generically we were supposed to be there. You need to know what they were supposed to do when we were there, and the crew needs to know what to tick off as got done when they were there. It's good to know that they were at a property on a given day, but what did they do when they were there? Did they uh, get the mowing done? Did they get the pruning done? Did they get the fertilization, et cetera? So service types are a list of the things that would be included in some or all of your contracts so that crews could tick off that, yes, it got done. Now, element scheduling will come with a bunch of default service types set up for you, but by all means, make sure you customize them to fit your business. The ones that come set up for you are just for samples to give you an idea how they work. When I create a work calendar, so for example, I'll show you lawn care because that's probably the best example of this. I can create a schedule for lawn care that's going to include a whole bunch of visits, in this case, eight. Now, each visit, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight down here on the left, is given a date, is given a earliest and latest valid date for this service to be completed, and it also will give a service type. So the service type is going to refer back to that list we were just looking at to know what we were supposed to do. So on April 15th, we're supposed to do the first fertilization. On April 30th, grub control. May 13th, weed control. And I can schedule an entire customer's contract this way, or at least give date ranges in which that service is supposed to be done. So flipping back to service types, I need a list here that would include the different types of services that we do. To add a service type to your list, just go down to the bottom right and click Add Service Type. Enter the name. I'll do, for example, a second application of weed control. I'd keep the service type names very short and sweet. Again, you need limited space on your screen. Uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to put in long uh, verb names. You can put in descriptions that'll help you describe what it is if you want. So there's my weed control. It's a second application of weed control as I already have weed 01. And I'll click OK. Now if I scroll down to my list, I've got weed 01 and weed 02. And now I can track when the crews go to do their work, whether this is a scheduled uh, application of Weed 01 or Weed 02, and I can get much more uh, descriptive if I want in the names, just giving you some general examples. So what then happens is your work calendars will refer to a visit type. So I showed you lawn care, but if I step back and go to, for example, mowing, then the visit schedules will be, for example, just cuts. The service type will be cut or mow, if you wanted to call it that way. And that way, as each week we're going, we're ticking it off that, yes, we completed the mow or we completed any of the other service types, but this is a mowing schedule, so we're gonna be tracking cuts. And that's how service types work. Now the really handy part is that you can use the schedule review screen to then analyze what's supposed to get done, what got missed, what's scheduled in the next week, and you can use the filters at the top of the screen to do that. So I can click schedule review, and this right now is showing me overdue work. Overdue work is work that was on the schedule, supposed to be done, but hasn't yet been marked by a crew as being completed. And I can drill down. So for example, if I wanna see overdone lawn cutting, I'll change the visit type here to cuts. And it'll show me just the cuts that are, the scheduled date is past today. I could also look up anything, uh, snow de-icing for instance. And there's all the scheduled dates that I was supposed to do some snow de-icing that didn't get done because we're looking at the overdue view here. We could also look at the scheduled view, which is going to give us an overview of what's scheduled in the next month or what got skipped or what got completed. So if I want to see what got completed last night or last week, I can hit completed. I can pick a calendar if I want to. I can pick the visit type. I can even filter it down by crew, but I can also pick a date range. So if I want to see just what got completed in the last week, for example, just back this up to maybe December 16th um, and then refresh
refresh my calendar. And there's my de-icing visits that got completed last week. You can also use the headers here to sort by any of these categories, date, crew name, job name, etc. You can print this as well by using the print button down here. And that'll give you a great idea then on what work was supposed to be done, what work has got done, what work got skipped, etc.